اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ولو اننا نزلنا الیہم الملائکت وکلمہم الموتا وحشرنا علیہم کل شئین قبلا ما کانو لیؤمنو الا این یشاء اللہ ولیکن اکثرہم یجہلون وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ عَدُوًّا شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنِّ يُوحِي بَعْدُهُمْ إِلَى بَعْدٍ بَعْدُهُمْ إِلَى بَعْدٍ زُخْرُفَ الْقَوْلِ غُرُورًا وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ مَا فَعَلُوهُ فَذَرْهُمْ وَمَا يَفْتُرُونَ وَلِتَسْغَى إِلَيْهِ أَفْئِدَةُ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ وَلِيَرْضَوْهُ وَلِيَقْتَرِفُوا مَا هُمْ مُقْتَرِفُونَ صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So Alhamdulillah today we are on in 8th juz of the Holy Quran at the Jews of the Holy Quran, once again you will find that there is a continuation of Surah Al-An'am which is the sixth chapter of the Holy Quran which basically begins from seventh Jews of the Holy Quran and it continues even in the eighth Jews of the Holy Quran and, and subhanallah when it comes to the importance and the significance of Surah Al-An'am which is the sixth chapter of the Holy Quran Hazrat Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentioned that Surah Al-An'am was revealed in the company of 70,000 angels it revealed in the company of 70,000 angels, subhanallah, is amazing. And uh, now, let's begin uh, eighth juz of the Holy Quran. Now, the very first verse that you will find in the eighth juz of the Holy Quran, which is, walau annana nazzalna ilayhimul malaika. Actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the very first verse of the eighth juz of the Holy Quran, Allah is addressing to those people, those who don't want to accept the truth, those who don't want to see the reality, those who don't want to accept the reality and what is what is haq, what is truth. Allah especially the disbelievers, Allah subhanahu wa says, وَلَوْ أَنَّنَا نَزَّلْنَا إِلَيْهِمُ And even if we had sent down unto them angels and the, and the dead had spoken unto them and we had gathered together all things before them, they would have not believed because of their stubbornness. They know it is, it is the right thing. They know whatever the Prophet is talking he is talking what is good and what is right, what is truth, what is haq. But they just don't want to accept it. And they, they're presenting the lambs excuses. They're saying, no, we will only believe on you when you will, when you will send, when you will ask your God to send down the angels. When you will ask your God to, 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 to give life to the dead people, when we will see with our own eyes, then and there we will believe. So in other words, they don't want to believe. They just, they're just making the excuses. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he, and even if he had sent down unto them the angels, means that instead of sending down the angels to the prophets, if he sent down the angels to these people, those who don't want to accept the reality, those who don't want to accept the truth, they will still not believe. Because there is a darkness in their heart. There is a stubbornness in their heart. There, there, is, so much, there, there is so much pride and ego. And uh, so subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كَانُوا لِيُؤْمِنُوا they, they, they would have not believed unless Allah willed. They will only believe when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will desire. But most of them behave ignorantly. So, you know, so they always try to find the fault. So, so once again, you know, the problem is always, my brothers and sisters, is not in the, in the message. The problem is not in the, in the prophet. The problem is not in the, in the message of the messenger. The problem lies in the, recip in the recipient of the message. The one who is receiving the message. Message itself is good. Message is talking about the truth. But the person to whom the message is being delivered, it, it is up to him that if he is ready to accept that message or not. So when you don't want to accept any message, so don't say no message is wrong, this is that. We have to find the faults within ourselves. Probably we, we within ourselves, we don't want to understand, we don't want to accept the reality. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks uh, in this beautiful uh, Jews, uh, in the very first verse of this beautiful Jews of the Holy Quran. 
and then uh, uh, this continues and goes on and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in chapter 116 of Suratul uh, An'am uh, verse uh, chapter chapter 6 Allah says wa in tuti' akthara man fil ardi yudilluka an sabilillah in yattabi'una illa dhan wa inhum illa yakhrusun and uh, if you obey most of those on the earth this is a very interesting verse and I want your undivided attention Allah says that if you obey most of those on the earth they will mislead you far away from Allah's path. Means that if you will start to follow the majority, they will lead you far away from Allah's path. You will, be end, you will end up be misguided and as, astray. Why? Because they follow nothing but con conjecture and they do nothing but lie. Now once again, you know, what, what we have here is a notion of complacency. Is a notion of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. In this, in this verse, in this beautiful ayah, is a notion of complacency. Because most people, they're, simple, they're simply being complacent. They're just simply being complacent and they will not try to follow what is outside of what majority is doing. In other words, they will always try to go with the majority without figuring, without realizing, without trying to you know, dig if they are following what is right or wrong. They will just go with the flow. Yes, yes, everybody is drinking the alcohol. Everybody is gambling. Okay, let me do as well because this is a part of the society. This is a reality or not? Because we can, we can, you know, this ayah can teach us what we are facing right now. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that don't follow the majority. What you have to follow is the truth. You have to follow the truth. If majority is following the truth, very good. But if the majority is following something which is, which is not the part of Islam, which is not the part of the teachings of uh, God, so you, you should not follow that. Just thinking that no majority is following and a lot of people are following. No, they can be wrong and they can be right as well. So what you have to do, you have to follow the truth. You have to follow what is haq. And you know, this is what is exactly happening in our surrounding, my brothers and sisters, throughout the world. For example, take the example of the alcohol. We see in our surrounding Everybody is drinking, most of the people are drinking the alcohol. And we see that the way this alcohol is being presented in front of us on the signboard, on the billboards. In other words, shaitan is beautifying the sin. Shaitan, this, this, this alcohol which is haram, which is totally 100% is unlawful. But the way it is presented in front of us, we end up thinking that no, this is not a sin. It is, it is a part of the society. It is a part of the culture. Everybody is drinking, so let me drink as well. Nauzu billah. That's how certain people think like that. They all, they always f follow their, uh, their their whims, their desires, their their false opinions. So this is what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is condemning uh, uh, in this verse. So you know we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to help us to follow what is right, to help us to follow what is truth. But I also want to mention that when it comes to the ummah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when it comes to the nation of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that that my ummah, my nation will never will never uh, you know it will never uh, my ummah will never agree on what is wrong what is batil what is what is false they will the majority of my ummah will be on haq the majority of my ummah will be on truth this is the blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to only follow what is what is right uh, what is what is good uh, subhanallah so and then uh, it goes on and it continues then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, uh, you know, He encourages us to, to only eat, only eat that meat which is slaughtered on the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is slaughtered on Bismillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 118, chapter 6, وَمَا لَكُمْ أَلَّا تَأْكُلُوا And why should you not eat of that on which Allah's name has been mentioned? So in other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encouraging us to eat only that which is being slaughtered on the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because there were pagans, you know, in the time of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in, 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 even before, they used to eat the dead animals. And, and sometimes, even if it is not dead animal, they used to slaughter their, their, uh, their, their, their animals on the name of the idols. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that for us, for a believer, only that meat is halal, that food is halal, that food is lawful, which is, which is, which is being prepared on the name of Allah, which is being slaughtered on the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so we remind ourselves about this as well. And then it goes on, once uh, 120 uh, uh, verse of the holy uh, this this the, this chapter chapter six Allah subhanahu wa taala talks about the sin actually. Was a ruzahid al ismi wa batina inna ladina yaksibun al ith sayujzona bima kanu yaktarifun. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is leave sin. Leave sin committing the sin openly and secretly. So both. So it's not something that we are uh, only allowed to leave the sin when it comes in the public. So we are, we, we, it is important that we need to leave the sin openly and secretly as well. So, so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily those who commit sins will get due recompense for that which they used to commit. And then there's a very interesting hadith concerning the definition of the hadith. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al ismu ma haqa fi sadrika. The sin is that which you find in your heart. The sin is that which you find in your heart and you dislike that people become aware of it. You dislike that people become aware of it. That is a sin. That is a definition of the sin. And then it goes on. Very interesting verse comes. One of my favorite verse. Verse 125 from 6th chapter of the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ Look at this. Huh? Subhanallah. Allah says, and, and whomever Allah wills to guide, He opens, He expands His chest for Islam. If Allah wants a guidance for somebody, what he does, he opens the heart of that individual. He opens the heart of, uh, heart of that person. But once again, that heart must be ready, must be in the preparation to receive the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't want to be guided, if you don't want to, if you, don't, if you are not working in the pursuit of truth, so don't expect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to guide you and you are waiting for the guidance of Allah. No, you have to work for the truth. You have to try to dig the truth. You have to try to find and seek the truth. And once your heart is in the preparation for that, once your heart is willing to accept the truth, Allah will open your heart. Allah will open your, the, Allah will bless you with a sharhi sadr. Allah will bless you with the opening of your breast, with the opening of your chest, subhanallah. Because your heart is ready to accept that nur of Allah. And you will see that eventually the nur of Allah will enter into your heart. The light of Allah will enter into your heart. So once again, and whomsoever Allah wills to guide, he opens or expands his breast to Islam, his heart to Islam. And, and whomsoever he wills to send astray, he makes his breast, he makes his heart closed. He, he makes his heart constricted because that heart is not accepting the truth, is not ready to accept the truth. No matter how many proofs you are presenting, how many... How many things you are presenting in front of that person to, to accept the truth is not ready. So what will happen? Eventually that heart will turn into the darkness where there will be no any, any, any guidance. So Allah will constrict the heart of that individual to the level that he will realize that he is climbing up to the sky. Thus Allah puts the wrath on those who believe not. Now, just want to mention one of the quote of Imam Ibn Qayyim. Imam Ibn Qayyim, he mentions, he gives us the signs of a person who has the constricted heart, the one who has the closed heart. So what, are, what kind of those people are? The first is the person who is ignorant. So the person who is ignorant means that he has a constricted heart. And the second is the one who refuses to act upon the knowledge. He knows whatever the Quran is saying is right, is haq. He knows everything is right, is 100% is, is true, but he still ignorant he is he, he refuse he rejects to act upon the knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is also the sign of the person who has a constricted heart and the third is the one who is privately hypocrite privately hypocrite means that when it comes to doing the good actions in the public he beautifies she beautifies they beautify their action in front of the people because everybody is watching everybody is looking but when it comes to doing the actions for the sake of allah privately they don't do there is no inequality uh, 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 when it comes to doing the actions privately. So, so means that they are privately hypocrite. And the fourth is bad way of treat, treating the people. So all these four, first ignorance, second is refusing to act upon the knowledge, third is privately hypocrite, and the fourth is they always love to treat people in a harsh way, in a bad way. So if somebody has these four signs, it means that person has, that person's heart has constricted, has closed, no mercy of Allah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our heart and to guide us and to save us from the misguidance. And then it continues. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, don't be extravagant. وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ And waste not by extravagance because verily he likes not the wasteful. And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa also mentions كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا وَالْبِسُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ إِسْلَافِ مِنْ غَيْرِ إِسْرَافِ Eat and drink and clothe yourselves without extravagance or arrogance. So we remind ourselves not to waste the things, not to waste the things, my brothers and sisters. And then 
there is a mentioning of 10 commandments yes 10 commandments which which revealed on prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam yes uh, in uh, in chapter 6 verse 155 uh, juz 8 subhanallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says qul ta'ala wa shayya wa bil walidayn ihsana that uh, come i will recite what your lord has prohibited you from first thing that he prohibited us from to not to associate the partner with allah and wa bil walidayn ihsana and to be always dutiful and kind towards the parents. You see, once again, you, you find that, that the idea of worshipping Allah is followed by with, with, with obeying the parents actually. So, that, that, that it shows the importance of loving and being kind and being dutiful towards your parents. Allah talks about His oneness and immediately after that, Allah talks about, subhanAllah, what? That be dutiful, be kind towards your parents. Third thing, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ مِنْ إِمْلَاقِ and, and, uh, and kill not your children because of poverty. And we provide sustenance for you and for them. And come not near to immoral sins, immoral sins, whether committed openly or secretly. And then kill not anyone whom Allah has forbidden, except for a just cause. This, the, you know, subhanAllah, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this verse. These are the few uh, commands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us when it comes to not doing. And then when it comes to forbidding ourselves. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks something very interesting with a very interesting verse Man ja'a bil hasanati falahu ashru amsaliha Verse 160 We are still in Surah An'am chapter 6 Man ja'a bil hasanati falahu ashru amsaliha That whoever who, uh, verily, uh, sorry, Whoever brings a good deed shall have 10 times reward If you are doing one good action Allah will bless you with 10 reward Subhanallah And if you are doing the ba one bad action Allah will only write one bad action in your account so this is once again is a mercy of Allah. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa says that whoever intends to perform a good deed and does not do it, it will be written for him as a good deed. Subhanallah. You are not doing it. You are not doing the good deed, but you just make the good intention to do it. Allah will still reward you because intentions were good. We will be judged according to our intentions, not according to our actions. So then Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa says if he performs it, it will be written for him as, as 10 deeds to 700. Subhanallah. To multifold. Multi, multifold. And whoever intends to commit an evil deed, but does not do it, it will be written for him as a good deed. Subhanallah. Means that he was planning to commit the sin, but he prohibited himself, forbid himself from that sin just because of the fear of Allah. So just because he forbid himself, Allah will write one good action in his account. Subhanallah. And if by chance, if he, is, if he, if he or she is end up committing the sin, Allah will write only one bad deed as compared to the person who is committing uh, one good action. Allah will write 10 good actions in his account subhanallah this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the this is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then surah al-a'raf begins which is the seventh chapter of the holy quran in the eighth juz of the holy quran surah al-a'raf uh, revealed in makkah just want to mention one very interesting incident concerning to adam alayhi salatu wasalam in iblis wa laqad khalaqnakum thumma sawwarnakum thumma qulna lil malaikati isjudu li adam fa sajadu illa iblis verse 11 uh, chapter 7 Allah says and surely we created you and then gave you shape Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Adam and talks about us and then we told the angels we told the angels usjudul li Adam that go and prostrate yourselves to Adam all of them they prostrated except Iblis he, he denied he refused to prostrate in front of Adam when it was asked to him that why you did not prostrate in front of Adam he says that قَالَ أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْ خَلَقْتَنِي مِّنْ نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِّنْ تِينٍ That, oh, 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 oh God, I'm better than him. Why? Because you created me from fire and you created him from the clay. So that is why I'm not going to prostrate in front of him. I'm better than him. I'm stronger than him. I'm higher than him. Once again, the pride, the arrogance, you know, misled the shaitan and caused him to be the shaitan actually. And then... Uh, you know, I just want to mention this hadith for the knowledge actually. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa says actually, uh, it is mentioned, Khuliqatil malaikatu min noor. The angels were created from the light of Allah. Angels are created from the noor of Allah. And, Wa khuliqa iblis min marijim min nar. And shaitan created from a smokeless flame of fire. Shaitan is created from a smokeless flame of fire. And, Wa khuliqa adamu mimma wusifa lakum. While Adam was created from what was described to you. Means that Adam is created from the clay, from the mud, subhanallah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be humble. So this is the time. Just make the dua inshallah. This is the time of the acceptance inshallah. Raise your hands and make special dua. Amin. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Wa la aqibat wa al-muttaqeen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyid al-anbiya ibn al-musirin. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. Tabarakta rabbana wa ta'ala ita yad al-jalali wa al-ikram. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. 
رب غفر ورحم وانت خير الراحمين يا الله فورغيف اور ماينر اند ميجر سينس يا رب العالمين يو ار غفور يو ار غفار يا الله هاف ميرسي ابون اول اوف اس يا رب العالمين يو ار رحمان اند يو ار رحيم يا رب السماوات والارض يا الله ريموف اور سينس يا الله ريموف اور ديفيكولتيز يا الله ريموف اور بروبلمز اند اور سيكنسز يا الله يا الله وي كيپنگ ذيس فاستس ان ذا منث اوف رمضان يا الله جست تو بليز يو يا الله بي بليزد وذ اس يا الله بي ميرسيفول تو اس يا الله Ya Allah, guide us with your guidance, Ya Allah. Protect us with your protection, Ya Allah. Forgive us with your forgiveness, Ya Allah. Bless us with your blessings, Ya Rabbu Samawati Wal-Ardi, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, if there was any mistake that we made while keeping the fast, forgive our mistakes, Ya Allah. We are not a perfect, Ya Allah. We are sin, sin, sinful people, Ya Allah. We have a lot of sins, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Please, Ya Allah, overlook our sins, Ya Allah. And have mercy upon all of us, Ya Allah. Grant Janatul Firdos to our loved ones, those who gone beyond, Ya Rabbu Samawati Wal-Ardi. Please make dua in your heart. Make dua in your heart. This is the time of acceptance. Ya Rabbi Alameen. I'm sabki bukhshif al-mati. Allah, I'm sabki mafrit al-mati. There is work. Tu rahim hai, tu kareem. Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to understand the Quran. Help us to implement the teachings of the Holy Quran in our life. بسم الله الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الارض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم اللهم زين اخلاقنا بالقران العظيم وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه ونور عرشه وزينه فرشه محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين سو يس ذس از ذا تايم تو بريك ذا فاست ان شاء الله اوكي سو ريبيت ذس دو افتر مي ماي برادرز اند سسترز اللهم اني لك سمت وبك آمنت وعليك توكلت وعلى رزقك أفطرت بسم الله go ahead break your fast I forget. You see? Okay. Jazakallah. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. Inshallah, you can join me for the Surah Al-Mulk.